Greetings and salutations, everyone. It is a uh, pleasure to be back with you again. Yes. What a treat. Yes. We are excited to spend our St. Patty's evening with you. And, you know, just because it's March 17th, I think. Before you open that, what? we've got to do it all the way. Okay. All right. All right. Set it up. All right. Set it up. Now, you're here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. But we need to get serious right away. Okay. What I want you to do is put your serious face on. Think serious thoughts. Kim is going to open a card and you are not allowed to smile at all. But, you know, not if, at all. What if they don't have their camera on? We're not going to know. Well, that's the other thing. We would love <laughs> it if you had your camera on. You don't have to have your audio on, but you have your camera on. It just you don't us. have to. It if helps you, us. If you don't have to. But we see you. We can see your smiling faces. <laughs> But not right now. I don't want you smiling right now. I want you Sherry, Neil to can't have help your herself. She's smiling so big. <laughs> face. And I dare you not to smile. Ready? All right. All right. Do not smile. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some good ones. All right. Good, good, good. good. Oh, Margaret is like, no, <laughs> I will not do it. She's can't break her. <laughs> <That's true. Yeah. laughs> Oh, we've she, been playing for a long time. all week. We've had way too much fun with that. I know. Uh, it's impossible not to smile. So happy Sam <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. We're glad you could you could spend some of your day with us. We're we're here to uh, to inspire you and have a few laughs along the way. We're going to tell some stories and share some thoughts. And uh, we're so glad to have you here. Yeah, we have kind of a, a neat little question to get things kicked off tonight. We're talking about the importance of building something wonderful. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that, Jason? Well, the, I want I'm, I want to go kind of deep here. All right. I want you to think about something wonderful that has happened in your life because of a skill you have acquired. And that's going to mean something in a little bit. Yes. But uh, what kind of skills one example I can give here? you yeah. is the fact that we are able to do this live right now um, is because when the pandemic hit 17 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know how to do any of this stuff. We didn't know how to do any of this technological stuff. I mean, I've got all these doohickeys and cameras and lights, and we literally started Two years ago to the day, yep. it actually was on St. Yeah, Patrick's Day, Yeah, in fact, right? yes. And on St. Patrick's Day, two years ago, we were sitting at our kitchen table, and Jason put this awesome thing on. Can you put that on? Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> and I had some sort of gold hair. I don't know. And we just go pushed go live, and we, we had, like, no lighting. We had no cameras that were worth anything it's just our laptop what yeah just laptop camera and we just oh said, yeah i remember this part <laughs> <laughs> he's being a good sport because i didn't tell him i was going to hand that to him by the way so no um so the point is you know there's there's opportunities to grow there's opportunities to um what we call tinker mm -hmm. and th that leads to skills and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight but in the comments yeah think and about yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> in the chat, what is, what is a skill? What is something that's happened in your life because of a skill you've of a, you've acquired? I want I want to I want to hear that. Just put it in the chat. Um, think about that. I know I'm fortunate enough here to have uh, my parents watching, um, and I I thought of one for them actually actually for my dad that he had learned carpentry skills and he actually was able to build our home that we grew up in us boys Which, you know um, to say build our home it's one sentence how many years I can, did it take to build i can home? barely put I up mean, a picture let alone but where's the line no it's, <laughs> I, I don't know what button to push for that yeah <laughs> holy nightmare <laughs> yeah we got we're all gifted in different ways uh let's see sherry says i'm now facilitating funerals wow what? thanks to my coaching and speaking training I'm blessing people's lives in one of their darkest Aww. moments. It's crazy, it's crazy how fulfilling it is. Wow, that is amazing. That is... Who would have known that those skills that you acquired through speaking and coaching would bring you to that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Wow. Becky says, I was able to travel a lot with an old job I had. It's always fun to be able to see the country, Ooh, for sure. Yep. Uh, Chevelle, I learned how to host Zoom events. Awesome. Right? Awesome. <laughs> Uh, Margaret, skill of loyalty has blessed me with uh, dear friendships, making Aww, dear friendships. So that's great. Very cool. 
Yes. Well, hopefully, feel free to keep those coming in as you think of them. Uh, Deborah, after my first child, I learned to become a wonderful mother without training. Yeah, uh, that's what they call on-the-job uh, training, isn't Where's it? the manual, right, yeah. Deborah? Right. Uh, a lot of, lot of trial lot, and error. A lot of tinkering <laughs> yeah, involved sure. in that. Right. Um, so so th- that's going to come back. And I want you to I want you to kind of have that in your in your brain as we go along, because we kind of put you on the spot. It's kind of a it's kind of a deep question to start with, but but think about that. Um, as we move forward. And uh, for those of you who have not been here before, you know that what we're all about is fighting this terrible, terrible disease, right? Yes, I know. This is this is our life's work, you guys, is getting the word out about adultitis. And the very simple definition that I like to uh, share is, you know, whenever you have itis at the end of something, it means the swelling of. So mm-hmm. adultitis is simply the swelling of the adult. When yeah. we take ourselves a little too seriously, but let's give them the full definition. Well, I mean, yes. some of these people have been here <laughs> twice already. They don't need to they, they already hear know this coming, definition so again. Go for it. Yeah, you got this. All right. Adultitis is a common condition occurring in people between the ages of 21 and 121. Mark by chronic illness, smile, depression, super high stress level, general fear of change, some free pace, the inability to smile, onset can make celebrant, experience, build responsibilities, or born work life. Generally, patient with this condition are not fun to be around. <laughs> <laughs> You know what that one felt like? You did it. That, no, you were running out of air. That one felt like when you're going down a hill on a bike and it's going too fast yeah. for your feet to keep up with and your you're pedals. Like, I'm gonna fall. I felt like my brain and my mouth was going too fast for my brain, but it worked out. Thank Literally. you for that. I appreciate yeah. <laughs> that. But yeah, this this is the official medical defi- definition of adultitis. And one of my favorite things of all uh, is to share some signs. Uh, how, how do you know whether or not you have adultitis? Now, Later on in the in the show, uh, we have a, we'll give you some information about how to find uh, an intake. We have a twelve question intake to find out what stage of adultitis you have. So stay tuned for that. But um, if you find yourself, you know, feeling constantly stuck, oh, <laughs> that is a good indicator that you might have adultitis. Um, what's another one? How about your calendar? Let's talk about that. Oh. If your calendar is more crowded than a clown car at a circus, <laughs> adultitis, right? We've had a week like that. Yes, we have. Mm-hmm. I have that kind of week where I don't have enough room on the square, so I have to draw arrows to the square. <laughs> <laughs> need a bigger calendar. Uh, that's not good. Uh, also, another sign is if you think the dictionary should be made into a movie. Oh, that's no, that's adultitis Does right there. Want that? People with adultitis with with full blown, full blown cases. Ouch. Okay. All right. uh, pointing out here, uh, Petty says skill of driving a, a ski boat allowed me the opportunity to work a skiing event. Ooh, that's pretty rad. That would be awesome. Uh, Denise, my photography and gardening skills have led me to creating a beautiful butterfly garden oh. that I photograph. What? That's. There you go. Come and it's like a that. green thumb. That's, that's one thing you're not very good at, right? <laughs> no. Uh, and no. Dan says, I learned how to help organizations improve their processes. And as a result, was able to travel to five continents in a single year. What? That's, that is and that is crazy. That's, that's some passport cool. stamps right yeah, there. That's some that's some mm-hmm. passporting. <laughs> uh, so uh, what we're what we kind of want to focus on tonight is one of my favorite things to talk about, and it is the idea of tinkering. I love tinkering because it is such a playful word. Right? Yeah. Tinker toys. You guys, obviously this is Jason's art, which you'll see throughout the program here tonight, but we would build all sorts of things. I would, I like to build like, um, uh, rockets with mm, the tinker toys. Climb, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There was there like little like wing type things with the tinker toys. Do you remember those like little plastic wingy things? I don't know. But anyway, I was always making rockets. I was always making some short we need tinker toys here to show you but anyway i was always building something right yeah well if you look up tinker in the dictionary it's it's simple it's to repair adjust or work with something in an unskilled or experimental manner now there are two two words in that definition that are particularly important and they are unskilled and experimental all right so i like to think back long ago when we were kids And when we were kids, we stunk at everything, right? I think of my my kids, my youngest daughter, because she's the most recent. When she learned how to walk, you know, the kids they'll do is they'll like they'll pull themselves up on a couch or something or a chair. 
and then they'll kind of scoot along while they're holding on. And then there's some day where they just decide they're going to go for it. They're going to let go and take that first step. And what happens? They fall, right? They fall, they, they fall. And what is not surprising, is not, that isn't surprising, but what is also not surprising is that they don't get up and look around the room and say, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I stink at this. I'm <laughs> terrible. You well, guys are so they can't talk talented at, <laughs> at walking. I stink at this. I'm just going to wait and find out what my special talent is, right? Yeah. They don't do that, right? When you learned how to ride a bike for the first time, did you race around the block your first time? No, you probably fell. You probably skinned your knee. You probably shed a tear or two. What happened to us? Why as adults are we so afraid to take that first step? Why do we have to feel like we have to know exactly how something is going to turn out before we're willing to take a first step? I think I know why. Why? Because somewhere along the line, somebody made fun of you for doing something wrong. Yeah. Right. That's a good one. Right. Usually yeah. like, I don't know, third, fourth grade. So you're afraid earlier. of experiencing that again. Right. Right. You don't want people to think you're an idiot, that you're right. dumb. You don't want to do something. Right. Shame. How many basically. times do you, right? uh, can you relate to this? You, you do something that you've never done before and you stink at it and we apologize. We're like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All that's, like, that's that's the human way. That's never done it before, right? Adulting is apologizing. So that's right. sort of the thing. Why I wanted you to think about what what skill uh, that you you've had, something that you've done that created something wonderful. That skill, right? Going back to like driving a ski boat, probably didn't nail it the first time. I'm just guessing, <laughs> right? How to host right. Zoom events, right? right? Chevelle, right. was your first Zoom event amazing? No, probably not. Sure no offense. Some things the hard way. But yeah, right. she's she's nodding, right? We still get things our first it. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it was because that's that's everybody's first time, right? Right. And that's really what we want to remind you of is that as we as we try to build something wonderful out of our lives, we have to start as beginners. We have to be willing to, to understand that we're not going to be great at it. And that's okay. We have to try things that might not work. And that's what tinkering is all about. Um, I like to think of the, the concept uh, also like the metaphor of the Etch-A-Sketch. Yeah. Remember, well, this is actually a photograph of Kim's latest work. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I just like to sit at night and you know tinker with that. Just get I don't know how people can do this. I'm really good. Oh, I, I'm actually quite good at drawing stairs. Oh yes, with the an etch sketch. You know, you're like very, very <laughs> prolific on the stairs. So good at me. that, right? Uh, but I like to think uh, etch a sketch is a little bit like a, a metaphor for life because uh, it's really hard to create something amazing, mm -hmm. right? Life. You, it's easier just to sit on the couch and binge watch Golden Girl reruns. Uh, but making something useful out of your life, building something wonderful, that takes a little bit of effort, right? But the other thing about the Etch a Sketch is it's really easy to start over, right? What do you what do? You do? I, for those of you who have your camera on, just do the motion. Let me see you do the motion of what you have to do. There you go, Elizabeth. Elizabeth yeah. The, yeah, I see it. There you go. Dan, good. Yeah, you yeah, just side shake to it. Side you too. just shake it like and it starts that. over, right? So you you shake it up. So that life is a little bit like that, isn't it? If you think about it, maybe today, I don't know, maybe today wasn't a very good day. Maybe you messed up. Maybe you said something to someone you wish you wouldn't have. Maybe something you were working on totally didn't go the way you wanted. But tomorrow is a chance to shake it up, to do something, to, to try again. And so that's the other thing we have to remember is uh, that when it comes to tinkering, we get to, we get to have do-overs, nothing. Start over. To try again. Yeah. Right? Control, alt, delete. Control, alt, delete. <laughs> yep. So this is another uh, painting of mine that, that has kind of a fun metaphor to it. And it's called Rocket Yeah. And uh, some of you are now thinking of a Def, Def Leppard song, if I've done my job correctly. <laughs> and you lived in the 80s. Uh, but this, this painting, this, kind of the short story behind it is that like going into space is hard, right? Mm, it's kind of, it takes yeah. like math and it's dangerous and we're still really not that good at it. There's, there's billionaires, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and all these people are trying to figure out a way to like get, get us to space safely and economically. And it's still a hard thing. Um, but I'm so grateful for all of the people over the years and NASA who've done all of the stuff to figure out 
how to make this happen because we've learned so much. But I think like when we think about some great thing that we want to do in our life, maybe a new project we're about to undergo or a new adventure we want to try, it's really easy to make that pros and cons list and think of all the negatives, all of the reasons that might not work, the scary things, right? But I think sometimes we, we make that list. And if we have even just one thing on, the, on the, the cons list, we take it as if like that's a reason not even to try or to move forward, right? And so this painting, the, the point of it with the whimsy is to remind us that, yes, trying new things can be scary and hard and dangerous, but it can also be amazing and fun and exciting. And I think we have to remember both sides of that. And so instead of just focusing on um, what if it doesn't work, is to think about the question, what if it does, right? So any more thoughts on that, Kim? No, but I really want to put bomb pops on the grocery list this week. We that? should. Okay. We should. <laughs> Do they sell those in the winter uh, or in March? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, we get some more. Um, Walt, I have become a decent kayak fisherman. Um, and, and something tells me that maybe the first couple times out wasn't the easiest, which actually we know some the of, of, we know some of Walt's stories. Hang of the kayak, yeah. I, I have a feeling, if I'm remembering correctly, there was a, a turnover in the boat. I don't know. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, of course, was because of my singing and leadership skills, I was a program aide of the Girl Scout Roundup. Some 150 girls what? currently help with a cancer woman Zoom group, too. Aww. That's cool. Uh, cool talented, talented crew on here. I know. All right. Well, let's go. I want to, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into some of this, uh, tinkering stuff. So let's do that. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Okay. So one of the things that, uh, often, uh, companies hire me to do is to come in and talk to their people about how to become more innovative. And, um, you know, more creative, things like that. But I, am, I am of the belief that the best adventures follow no maps. I believe that you can follow best practices or you can be innovative, but you can't do both, right? Because best practices are great, but I think we should, we should be always trying to find better practices, don't you? And how do you find better practices? Well, the only way to find better practices is to try things that might not work. Because if we knew that they would work, they would already be a better practice, right? So that's where tinkering comes in. Tinkering is sort of the idea of trying things that might not work, but taking out all of the ugly fear and scariness of what if it doesn't work, that we're a loser and terrible and dumb and stupid and all that. Take that out of the equation and just say, we're going to try this and we're gonna see if it works, right? Um, so when it comes to innovation, here's something I, I want to share. Uh, I don't care what line of work you're in or what you, maybe you're retired or whatever. We all have the opportunity to be more innovative um, in, a, in a kind of a cool way. So, of course, something like this is very innovative for any time they come up with a new technological gadget. Right. But guess what? So is this. Right. So is this being able to. <laughs> Figure out the mess of cords that you have of your TV and your stereo system and your Blu-ray player and all that stuff. Just putting these little bread clips on and labeling them, it's amazing. It's like innovation is nothing more than an introduction of a new and better idea, method, or thing. That's it. That's what innovation is. So uh, I like to bring out this guy quite a bit. Uh, you know who he is, right? Albert Einstein. He came up with this groundbreaking equation equals MC squared. Uh, spoiler alert, I have no idea what this means. It's a big deal, but I have no idea. I have no idea what it means. But what I love is that it doesn't matter because what Einstein said is that I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. All of a sudden now I feel like I can kind of be like Einstein because I can be curious. You can be curious, right? All you have to do is just ask questions. You have to ask like, what? Why do I do things this way? What would happen if I tried it this way? Why don't we do this? Uh, that's it, just be curious. How, why, why did this get started, right? And I wanna share with you right now, like probably the coolest question that you can ask yourself, that if you ask yourself this question regularly and then 
and then answer the question, you will become the most innovative person you know, all right? It's very simple. All you have to do is ask this, what's one thing I could do to make this a little bit better? Now that might be might, might feel underwhelming, that question. Be like, well, oh, it's so big about that question. There's a lot of magic in this question, all right? First of all, there's a couple words I wanna, wanna emphasize here, all right? One, that's the first one, just one thing. A lot of times we get so overwhelmed with all of the bajillion things we could do to make something better. And then we get overwhelmed, we don't do any of them. But if you just said, what's one thing? Just one stupid little thing, right? Um, and then along those lines is the, is the little two words, a little bit, just a little bit. Again, you don't have to launch into the stratosphere. You don't have to go to the moon. What would be one thing you could do to make this a little bit better? And I keep saying this, and that's, that's actually the most powerful part of this question is that this could be anything. This question works for everything. So this might be something at work, like our onboarding process for new employees or our, our hiring process, our, the, the, the forms that we give our, our customers, our patients, like what's one thing we could do to make this a little bit more efficient, a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit easier to process, whatever it is. But this could also mean things like your marriage. What if every day you asked yourself, what's one thing I could do to make my marriage a little bit better? And then you did it. Or what, what, what if you said, what's one thing I could do to make my parenting a little bit better? What's one thing I could do today to make my life a little bit more wonderful? It's an amazing question if you, if you think about it and then just do it. And some of the things you come up with might not work, but that's okay. But the ones that do keep doing those things, right? That's really the template for tinkering when it comes to our jobs, our home lives, our relationships. What's one thing I could do to make this a little bit better? Now, sometimes our ideas aren't always great or don't work as good as the original, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, I want to share a little story about a time that uh, we, we went on, we were going on a walk. All right. And my daughter, Lucy, was wearing her Halloween costume, which was a princess dress. And if I remember correctly, I had spent a pretty good amount of money on this princess dress. And I was kind of wondering why we were just wearing it out and about, not on Halloween, especially because we were walking by a lake. We were living in, in uh, Madison at the time and we were walking by one of the lakes and she was walking on the shore and a speedboat went by and it started to the waves started to get up on her dress. I'm like, oh, Lucy, get away from the water. You're going to ruin your dress. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, that is totally adultitis, right? I'm just, it's not that big of a deal. Let kids be kids, right? So I turned my attention to my son, Ben. And now he was wearing his Halloween costume, full blown, like muscles, the full body, incredible Hulk costume. And he was laying in the sand, face down, motionless. He looked like a green sea turtle who was nesting or something. And I'm like, oh, going to have to get that looked at eventually. And then I turned my attention back to Lucy. And now I see she is in the lake up to her armpits in her princess dress. Just stand in there. And I'm like, what is happening? And I am struggling to find a reason in my brain and like, we, we talked last time about rules that don't exist, right? The rule that says lakes and princess dresses shall not go together. And I was coming up empty. And I'm just sort of like freaking out. And then, and then I saw, saw it. I saw her face. She was smiling so brightly. The sun was setting behind her. I thought this kid right now, she is living life as well as it could possibly be lived. Who am I to tell her to get out of that lake? And I think about that a lot. And I think about how many times does life give us an opportunity to jump into something with both feet? And yeah, it might get a little bit messy, but how many times do we just stay back on the shore? Why? I'll tell you why. I think it's because we're afraid of getting our princess dress wet. And yes, Everyone has a princess dress. It is our carefully curated version of ourselves. 
It's the way we present ourselves to other people. It's what people expect of us or what we think people expect of us. It's how we do our hair, how we dress, where we live, what kind of car we drive, what neighborhood we live in, where our kids go to school, what letters are after our name. All of those things create an aura about us, a princess dress, as you will. And there are certain things in our life that we are not allowed to do, or we might mess up our hair or our clothes or our reputation. Well, I made this painting for my daughter. It currently hangs in her bedroom as a reminder that life is too short to sit, sit on the shore, letting amazing opportunities go by. Do not be afraid to get your princess dress wet. Now, sometimes metaphors work for people. Sometimes they don't. Maybe the metaphor doesn't work for you. I, 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 were, I, I did a, a talk at a uh, chicken manufacturer plant. They didn't actually manufacture chickens, but they process them. I don't, I don't know what technically is what it's called, but I had to speak to the entire company and there were four different shifts. And the first talk I gave was at like six in the morning to the guys and the women who had just come off of the, the midnight shift and they had all of their uh, protective gear on, the hairnets. And uh, many of these uh, folks were not ready to admit that they had a princess dress. And I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't the best metaphor. Unfortunately, I found a better metaphor two weeks later. But I'll share it with you just in case it helps. Because I always love the idea of looking at things from different angles, right? Uh, this one has to do with the guy named Rosie Greer. Rosie was a member of the Fearsome Foursome, part of the LA Rams back in the 70s. And these guys terrorized quarterbacks, running backs. Um, he was ferocious, uh, was quintessential all pro, just an amazing football player. What was amazing to me is the different things that Rosie did after he retired, all right? Uh, a few things that weren't that surprising, okay? He, kinda, he became a, a bodyguard afterwards. It was interesting. He became a recording artist. He had a really good voice. And then he was a talk show host. But my favorite thing that I was like, what? He was a needlepoint buff. A needlepoint buff. Like, yeah, because that's what I expect out of retired defensive linemen, right? So much so, this wasn't just a passing thing. He actually wrote a book. You can look it up. Rosie Greer's Needlepoint for Men. And Pardon my French, but if that is the most badass thing I have ever heard, I don't know what is. It's a perfect example of what it means to uh, not be afraid to try new things, to jump into new fields, to not let ourselves get hung up on what other people think about what we should be doing, and to not be afraid to try things and maybe get laughed at along the way. Because, you know, someone laughs at Rosie, they're not going to live very long, probably. Um, but I love this example of of tinkering, of trying new things, not being afraid uh, to, uh, to jump in the, the opportunities that come in front of us when they come our way. Well, I'd love to hear at this point, um, what, what, you, what are you guys thinking about with this tinkering thing? Have you, do you have examples? Obviously we talked about the skills that we've learned, many of which if we really trace it back now, it's come in full circle, right? You probably tinkered to learn um, at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious, like if, if this is sparking anything for anyone, that is something that you're an opportunity that might be in front of you to say, Ooh, you know, I'm kind of, I would like to try this. And maybe this is kind of getting some of the courage up that you might need to take that, those little first steps, right. To, to build on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there, do you think of yourself as a uh, natural born tinkerer? <laughs> or are you, uh, is that, is that the proper is, is that noun some, for that? Yeah, or is it something that is, doesn't come naturally to you? I'm curious about yeah. that. Or maybe, I mean, cause I think we all were to a certain extent when we were kids, Right. I think it was kind of a natural thing. And some of us keep it for whatever reason, some of us lose it for whatever reason. So just chime in. If you have any comments on this, we'd love to, to pull them up and, and hear your thoughts. Um, or if you have any questions about it and you're wondering, because it is kind of a fun thing to think about, especially when you think of all the change that's happening in industries and in the world right now, now more than ever, I kind of feel like is the time to start tinkering with whatever you have in your heart. Um, because the, I think why wait, right? Yeah. The, the world's moving really quickly right now. Yep. Um, well, speaking of, uh, not waiting, uh, we, we have to do something Fun, yes. don't we? Is it time? It's time. All right. All right. Grab 
your ballpoint pen, your pencil, your Sharpie, mm -hmm. your... <laughs> Go ahead. Go. All right. Go ahead. What's the time for? Uh, it is time. Let's draw. Oops. Uh, We're missing. Uh, we're supposed to be on camera here. No, nope, not that we'll, one. You'll find us. Here we go. There we go. There we go. The little right. circle. Okay. So if you didn't join us in the last two, uh, I invite you to grab something to draw with and something to draw on. Could be a ballpoint pen and the back of an envelope. And we're going to take you step by step through a drawing that afterwards you will impress your friends and make Talk them jealous. Tinkering. Yeah, this right? is a, this is if this is a real chance to tinker. And this is this is a next level drawing here and I am very confident that you guys will be able to pull it off, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do somewhere on our paper, somewhere in the middle, we're going to draw uh, two lines, two vertical lines like that. Pretty pretty good. Pretty mm -hmm. easy. Not too hard, right? Um, okay, now we're going to draw, let's see uh uh how many do I have to do? Four, yeah, four, four additional vertical lines, a little bit smaller um, in the middle here. So just kind of, they don't have to be perfect. One, two, three, four, all right? So we've got basically six lines. The two on the outside are a little bit taller, I guess. The other ones can be, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll clean it up as we go along. All right. Now the next uh, next uh, step is to take uh, these two and round it off. Connect them with a little round hump and these two with a little round hump. Uh, don't be afraid of these extremely technical artistic terms such as little round humps, okay? <laughs> I, I went to school for this, you guys, so just try to keep up if you can. Uh, okay, now we're going to do uh, some on, on the inside, we're gonna do, do we're gonna reverse that hump. I'm gonna do an I'm gonna call this an up hump. How you like that? An up hump. Oh, All right. Man. And then on the edges, we're just gonna draw like a slant slant them in slanties, as they're called in the business. <laughs> All right. How are we doing so far? So far, so good. You guys doing all right? All right. All right. The hard part is already over. All right. That was that was already the hard part. All right. Now at the top, we're going to do a couple more slanted lines like this. All right. All right. We got these slanted lines. And at the top, we're going to put a little uh, little bump up here like that. And it may start to look like something that you've seen earlier in this episode. Uh, we're going to take a couple, take, do another more, couple more vertical lines. Down like this. And then we're going to connect that one with a little rounded edge. And then what we're going to do is, uh, you know, the, what did I call this thing down here? The bump up? Is that what I call that? <laughs> we're going to draw another one another right bump here. Up. Okay. And another one right there. Sounds like volleyball. A bump up. A bump yeah, up. sure. Mm -hmm. Bump set spike. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna we're on the on the next uh, ridges, I guess. We're gonna do the bump bump downs to mirror what we already did, right? So you can see what we're we're going for here, and then we're gonna mimic those slanty lines on the edges. And right now we've got ourselves a bomb pop, but that's not all. What we need to do is we need to add. The, the blast off part. Oh yes, and that's the just kind of off. you know just kind of like clouds, mm -hmm. these little bumps, and then it's really just a matter of uh, having fun with some color, right? Yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna color a few things in here real quick, and then I'm gonna give you a little extra bonus tip. Uh, I think it's it's red, white, and blue, right? It's red on top. I'm but pretty sure you know this is your bomb pop. Yeah, you can you make do. it however the heck you want to make it. It doesn't have to be these colors. Right? All right. Now, oh, by the way, if you so let's pretend I didn't color that in. <laughs> so if you're coloring on just like a regular piece of paper, if you leave a little, um, a little circle right there, mm, don't color that part don't in. Color that part in. That's okay. going to make it look like it is shiny. 
All right, now we're gonna take our blue and I'm gonna color in the blue parts. Deborah says, this is great, thank you. You're welcome. Right? That's that, awesome. We, um, we always like to tell people this is kind of like Bob Ross meets Willy Wonka because he's gonna take you step by step just like Bob Ross, but you never know. He's not really making happy little trees. We're making happy little bomb pops. And yes. Um, oftentimes it is things to eat. I think you do a lot it of does. sweets. There's a lot, of, a lot of animals and a lot of things <laughs> like to eat. Like Willy Wonka would. Well, you know, I've never actually done this, but since you said happy bomb pops, here's a little thing you could add to this, is a, a, little, a little dot here and a little dot here. <laughs> And boom, Aww, your day just got better, right? did it not? Yes. All right. Becky says, happy little bump outs. <laughs> there you go. Happy little bump outs. Thank you, Becky. Uh, okay, so if, if we have our little dot up in the right corner, then that's where the light is coming from. So if you take a darker color and make, uh, make a little edges on the opposite Ooh. side. See, that's what I love. This is your Bob Ross side. This like, is the part that's going to make it what? a little bit more realistic. It makes it way more... There's depth now, right? right? So a little gray mm -hmm. here. So just whatever, a little bit darker than whatever the color. So if you made your bomb pop green and orange and yellow, then just make them a little bit darker than whatever those green, orange, and yellow colors are. I like this with a smile. You it never add does. a smile. I have not I added. I know. It's this a new is, thing. Yeah, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And if you like this, by the way, on our YouTube channel, so Escape It All Hood, let's see, YouTube slash Escape It All Hood, there's a whole playlist of i don't know guys there's like 80 of these yeah, let's draw over 80 now. right there's 80 different let's draw segments because we have a weekly show on facebook every thursday or no thursday every wednesday <laughs> uh oh we're missing it yeah well, every wednesday night at 7 45 central time we go live on facebook and one of the segments is let's draw so now there are 80 of these little guys these little segments and they're fun to do with other people and we've heard people um sharing them with their grandkids or just, you know, having fun filling a, a, a sketchbook with them. So, hey, it turned out cool. Thank you. But now yes. my favorite part is yes. for you to hold up, put your camera on, hold up your drawing. I want to see it. See? I want to see what we have. How Jen is do? ashamed. I don't know why. She, Dan, oh. good job, Dan. <laughs> Margaret looks great. Sherry looks oh. great. Chevelle had colors. Good job, oh, Chevelle. Becky, awesome. Elizabeth. Uh, Cora, are you still working? Did you hold yours up? Did I see? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice job. Nice Lots job. Good job, Maggie. Good job, Maggie. Good job, Deborah. Yes. Deborah's yes. your the face on yours is so cute, Deborah. Oh, yeah, that's good. I love it. Good work, you guys. Good work. So cool. Jen was uh, not willing to share hers. Oh, didn't didn't try. Right. That's okay. That's what tinkering is. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work out, and that's okay. Right. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's keep it moving. We want to we want to cram a little bit more adult itis fighting in here before we yeah, have to go. Right. Before we do that, can we go back to some of these cool comments? No. So, we can't. Oh, please. Let's get you. Know, what do you, you want to go up to? Okay. So um, let's see. Oh yeah, Margaret said that I play um, and tinker with some of her musical background to be able to learn the banjo, which oh, I thought wow. is very challenging. Hmm. Was that five strings? No, how many? No six, idea. A seven? I think I there's know. 17 strings on the banjo. Okay, I'm that's sure. why it's challenging. <laughs> yes, and Dan says he loves to experiment. Becky says I tinker with words a mm, lot. Interesting. I, I wonder how, like yeah. poetry or writing. That sounds very cool. very cool. And then Denise says when we went into lockdown, I decided to teach myself watercolor. Two years in, and I sold my first painting. Oh, congratulations! That is so cool. That's oh, super cool. It's amazing. Yeah. So you score one for tinkering. Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, if you want to tinker with a few more ways to uh, keep adultitis out of your life, we have five Fab Five tips. All right. Let's do it. All right, you guys. Our tip number one is name your stuff. This is a really easy way to keep adultitis at bay because there's just something really whimsical and playful about having things that are named, such as this amazing green car from one of our adultitis fighters and Wonder Whimsy Society members, Kara Tracy. This is their car, Joey Guacamole. Mm -hmm. And she actually refers to it all the time. She's like, oh yeah, me and Joey went to the store. And uh, people think it's a person, right? And, and the, obviously it's got the cool eyes when she parks, mm -hmm. but um, just adding personality and, yep. to things, mm -hmm. right? Well, and we when we moved into our house, we named our house. One of the things yes. we loved about 
when we went to Mexico is that we saw people name their homes. Casa so, de, you name it. Like, yeah. and it was kind of neat when we would go for walks in Mexico to read the different names. We look up what the words meant. I'm like, oh, this is the house of birds or this is the house of um, trees or whatever it mm-hmm. is. So ours is Casa de Whimsy. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of fun to to just add a little playfulness. Yeah, I, I'm willing to bet someone on here has named their car. Uh, that seems to be a, f- a fairly common thing, or maybe remember motorcycle, uh, the, especially if you have an old beater. You Actually, know, like, I know someone on here has named uh, a motorcycle. So if she wants to mention anything <laughs> about that, but very cool. All right, this one. All right, this one is is uh, takes a little bit of courage. All right, but if you're if you're willing to uh, go for it, basically the point of this one is to speak in a fake accent <laughs> to a stranger. That's it. I stink at this. Would you do that? I stink at this. Would you do that? We did it because we had to. We made this up. We came up with a series of challenges that we invited people to do. And we're like, well, we have to do it. And uh, I think we did it at a, a drive thru. We, we kind of whipped out and did it at the drive thru, which I don't. But... I remember being all nervous to say, like, I'd like a few cheeseburgers, please. And I don't, I don't know what accent that is. And I thought I was over. <laughs> And then I suddenly realized, which I should have known, is that I would have to talk to the person when you get the once food. I got the food. And they're like, do you know, they were like, do you want ketchup or whatever? And I'm like, no, thank you. And then <laughs> I, I drove off and we laughed and laughed and laughed. And it's funny how ridiculous I felt and how nervous I was about it. A really fun way to do this, though, is with people that you know really well, people that sit around your dinner table and just have like an accent dinner. Right. Yeah. And just add that. Just but it is it is a little nerve wracking. It is. But you know why this is this is a good thing to do as, as ridiculous as it is, is it helps you get out of your comfort zone in a way that is really low stakes. It feels like it, but it's pretty low stakes. And when you do it, you, your, your comfort zone, your courage grows a little bit more so that then when you're faced with something that's maybe a little bit more challenging and higher stakes, you have, you have that muscle worked yeah, out, right? That's very true. Oh, this is a good one. You guys Play-Doh time machine. Um, yeah, I can smell this picture. Can you smell this? Oh, it smells so good. So there is something very powerful. We all know the power of scent and the connection to memories. So the idea is think back to some positive memories from your childhood. Think of what scents were a part of those positive memories and build them into your life. Keep the Play-Doh on your desk. Or um, I've been using these for our Let's Draw segments um, on Facebook, the box of 64 crayons. The smell, you guys, I mean, if you've not smelled crayons in the last decade, you need to pick them up at the grocery store. Straight into my mouth. Right? (laughs) But maybe it's a candle that's like banana bread or whatever it is that connects you to those positive childhood memories. Keep it nearby. It's Mm -hmm. pretty powerful stuff. Uh, Here's a fun one that you can do at work or at home on your fridge. It's called (laughs) add a caption. And you just get kind of a weird or funny photo and then put a little stack of post-it notes next to it. And then as people go to grab something for the fridge or they go into the break room or wherever you set it up, they, they put up a little caption of something, something funny. Yep. And then, cause people can't resist making a caption and then you right. can't resist reading the captions and then you can't not help yourself from laughing at some of them. And then you can do a thing like whoever uh, you vote, whoever was the funniest wins a little prize, gets the best parking place at work, like yeah. some, some little perk. Um, but it's a, it's again, it's a fun thing to do to keep uh, morale up and help the best us part's fine in the pictures. Not take ourselves too right? seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of not taking ourselves too seriously, oh, this is one of our all time classic favorites. It's called silly soap opera. And we're going to go back in the time machine because we made a video about how this one works because it's best explained through video. And you will see what we look like You'll when see we were how long 12 we've been doing years this. old. <laughs> writes the dialogue for those daytime soap operas. I mean, how cheesy can you get, right? I mean, here's the the thing. You have a chance to find out yourself by taking, uh, having fun with this ad-libbing game that we like to call Silly Soap Opera. 
How does it work, Tim? Well, basically, you're going to turn on the TV and push mute, okay? And then everyone in your family will, well, first of all, find a channel that's going to have some sort of dramatic show on. Overly dramatic, yes, if overly possible. overly dramatic. Um, soap Opera Network is going to always come through on that. A Hallmark Channel usually does the trick. Made for TV movies are good. Yeah, you know, you know black and whites are usually pretty Anything good. Anything starring Meredith Baxter Bernie <laughs> is for sure going to work. But of course, if we got little kids, you want to make sure the visuals are safe, go to the Cartoon Network or put on some movie or something. But um, put it on mute. And then as characters start interacting with one another, you know, people in your family spontaneously choose a character to be and they just put in the words you're ad-libbing you're just gonna kind of say what you think they're saying and then as you start interacting with one another it just becomes hilarious and just let let the visuals kind of lead the way yeah use the use that the characters give you what are their facial expressions what are they doing but don't be afraid to let the plot veer off into any direction <laughs> okay that's what yeah. makes it fun so you might be wondering yeah it sounds interesting how does it work how does it look when it's actually done yeah. we put together a little clip showing you silly soap opera in action i really want to do this and you can't stop me and i think i've really wanted to have a lemonade stand for a long time and and this is what I want to do. I, I'm going to get a box. Well, I can get a box. I. You can? You can, you can get a box? Like how big? I'm, cardboard. Well, yeah. Uh, I have to do some looking around. I, here, well, I can ask my boss. I'll get whatever I can. The biggest size I can get, uh, we can make this happen. Uh, let's just let's just work this out, and it'll be fine, right? I mean, lemonade stand—that's a great idea. I thought that you come through. I, you, you were so against it at first, but the lemonade—it's so, it's so good, and yes. It's very good. <laughs> it's the best lemonade I've ever had. So that's it. That's how it works. Simple. Pretty simple, pretty crazy, pretty silly. Yeah. That's why we call it Silly Soap Opera. And we have actually played this with Kim's family um, over Christmas for the last couple of years when all the kids go to bed and we turn on the soap channel and it is a <laughs> hoot. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. and. Um, Definitely, sometime this week, put your TV to good use, engage in what we like to call the silly soap opera, and remember your day isn't done until you've had some fun. Oh, you guys. <laughs> I was so fun to see your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Patty says this would be a great adult party game. And yes, like we said in the video, we did we yeah. do that with Kim's family sometimes, but I got Full disclosure, total warning, Surgeon General's warning, be careful who you play the game with and what shows you pick. I mean, we, we, soap operas are great because they're so dramatic, but there was one time yeah. I got into a, iffy. a love scene with my mother-in-law. <laughs> Not great. Not great. So be careful. It gets real you, awkward really quickly. You've been warned. All right. But uh, it is, it is pretty fun. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sherry, was that a mustache or a shadow? Uh, thank you, Sherry. Yeah. Also, uh, darker hair back then. Um, anywho, so those are some ideas for you. Hopefully, you can use at least one of them to keep adultitis on the down low. All right, we are to our giveaway portion and, and we have a fun uh, build something wonderful print to give away to someone who is going to answer this question. What do they have to answer tonight? Uh, what's been your biggest takeaway from this session? Is there an idea you're going to try? Is there a story that you loved? Is there something you're going to uh, take away from tonight, whether it's serious or silly? We just want to know what, yeah. what was some, what was your biggest what's, takeaway? What do you Put want it in the away? chat and we will pick one person to uh, reach out to and, and get this this print. The cool thing is, is there's an opportunity to uh, for everyone to get the print, right? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, and actually, well, I, I'm gonna. 
You can do I'm that. I'm explain minute. how to do that in a minute. Okay. Because I'll, put, ahead I'll of put up on the screen. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Let's um, see what okay. Our let's see. What we got uh, Deborah. Are. Have fun. Life is too short. Denise, have fun. Uh, oh, we had some people earlier talking about naming things. Dan says, my dad gave my wife a flower pattern adjustable screwdriver as part of a wedding gift. We use it to frequently around the house. 20 years later, I named it Larry. <laughs> Larry said that. Uh, let's see. Ideas are open to everyone. Do not limit your creativity. Great, Margaret. That's, nice. that's great. Um, tinker, one thing a little bit better. That's Yay. right, Sherry. Yes. Uh, Mariah, putting joy into the everyday life. Love that, right? Nice. Good. Um, keep those coming in. Uh, there was also another one I wanted to talk. There was another. Uh, I think Sherry did talk about her motorcycle. Oh, I, was, she? I was. Lily? Cat- yeah. Lily, the car is Chloe and the backpack is Ruby. <laughs> wow. There you go. Uh, Denise said her husband's car was the red roach. Just would die. Oh. After 20 years, we just gave it away. That's great. We name all of our computers. I mean, I think most people do because you have to kind of name them on the back end, but we, we name them fun names. John's. Uh, yeah, we don't Dell name them. Or something. Yeah, no, yeah. we have fun names. Well, like, what's your, what are your recent computer names? Um, Gizmo. Gizmo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the keeping a pleasant scent memory nearby. Mm-hmm. There you go, Anne. I love that. It's just yeah. simple, yeah. simple things. That's what we try to do is, is just give you something simple that you can add to your life in a pretty easy way to uh, keep uh, adultitis letting it letting adultitis know who's boss right? yes for sure all right um so oh yeah so let's get to this this other thing you're going to talk about so yes. every sunday uh we send out a little message with reminders very much the similar to the stories and things we've been sharing today uh and if you would like to be a part of our merry band adultitis fighters you can go to escapeadulthood.com slash insider or text escape to 66866. And if you do that tonight, we have a special thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you can download that. this yeah. print. It's a five by seven print. You can download it for free in the adultitis fighter arsenal. And if you sign up to become an insider, the, the welcome email will say how to get to the arsenal. If you've already become a subscriber at the bottom of any issue, there is a link to the Adultitis Fighter Arsenal with the password and you can get access to it. So if this uh, artwork struck a chord tonight, I'd love for you to be able to just print it out, put it on your fridge or in your on your desk at work uh, and uh, enjoy that. Um, I think that was it, except for so. my last little point. And you've heard the saying, here goes nothing, right? I think about that. Uh, I'm a, a sports fan, and I think about that when it comes to uh, Hail Mary pass. You know, any any football football fans know at the end of the game, if your team is losing and you're running out of time and you really, your last chance is just to throw the ball as far as it can go and hope that one of your guys will catch it. They call that a Hail Mary. And you kind of have the idea of like, well, here goes nothing. It kind of means it's probably not going to work. Right. Usually that's what that means when we say that. Right. But I think when it comes to tinkering, it's a different story. All right. I think when it comes to tinkering that sometimes we try new things, sometimes it doesn't work out. But in the process of tinkering, something amazing happens. You learn something. Your comfort zone grows a little bit bigger. uh, You grow. And lo and behold, maybe even it works. Maybe it even works even better than you thought it would. And so the last thing we just want to leave you with is just this concept of embrace this idea of tinkering, especially if you really want to build a wonderful life or relationship or organization. And be confident that knowing any time you tinker, you can always trust uh, in the in the belief that you can say here goes something. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. It has been a blast. We're going to be back one more time on April twenty first, uh, same bat time, I believe, right? <laughs> yes. But April twenty first. Yes. So and uh, hope you can you can make it and uh, tell a friend. Yes. Keep shining, everybody. It's good to spend this time with you.